How can you make your React code cleaner? Today, we're gonna be looking at some bad examples and then try to make them cleaner so that it's easier for your future colleagues to read and understand the code that you write. But before we begin, please help to get this video recommended by smashing the like button below. Thank you very much and now let's get started. Alrighty, so the way we're gonna be looking at our examples today is the following. First, we're gonna check the dirty example and discuss what we can change there. And then we're gonna look at a clean example, which should be the ideal way of writing your code. All right, first thing, proper reusing. I'm pretty sure you know that in order to make your app scalable in the future, you need to make sure that it's also modular. So in this example, we have two components thingy and thingy with title. And as you can see, the only difference here is that thingy with title also has this title component passed in. Well, how can we follow the dry principle, which is called don't repeat yourself and make it more reusable? Okay, let's look at our clean example. Here we have thingy as single source of truth and it accepts children and then renders them. Well, and then thingy with title simply takes this thingy component and passes a title in as a child, and then it gets re-rendered above. Now you can ask me, well, what's the difference? We still have two components and it doesn't look really scalable. Well, let me tell you, imagine we have many more components. So let's create a new one and call it title and text, for example. So we wanna pass a text as well. What we're gonna do is simply pass text and that's it. We don't need any divs or anything else here. And thingy is gonna re-render or basically render whatever children it has. This code looks much cleaner. All right, the next point is setting state that relies on the previous state. In this example, we have a single simple handler toggle button and it sets this hook value, set is disabled and it relies on the value of is disabled. Well, please pause the video and think what is wrong here. But I can already tell you. Imagine we have two handlers or basically the state is being updated from two different places. Then we're most likely gonna have a race condition because we're not gonna know what the actual value of this is disabled is by the time we're updating it. And the same problem is gonna happen when we use use callback in order to optimize our apps. Because use callback accepts a list of dependencies and, and one obvious dependency here is is disabled value that is that we're taking from the state. So if we pass it here, this looks kind of like a loop. So it's not really gonna cause any performance improvements for us. Of course, you need to import use callback, but anyway, we have two obvious issues here. So how can we fix this? Let's take a look. The only thing that you need to change is simply update your state based on the previous value of the state that you derive from it. So this first prime parameter is basically the previous value. And you can take a look at React's documentation to learn more about it. And then we won't need to pass any dependencies to use callback because we are gonna be taking the previous value automatically. Well, the next point is state versus rendering. In this example, we have a user component which fetches the data and sets some user state and sets the loading value. And depending on whether we're loading or not, we're gonna show a loading or some user data. Everything is fine with this code, except that it's not that scalable. It's a good practice to separate state, values, side effects, and the template. So let's take a look. Let me uncomment this. Okay, so in this example, you're gonna notice that we don't have much template here. We still have this set user and set is loading, but the template is much shorter. Basically, we created new components called loading and user. Of course, these components should be somewhere else. Imagine they're there but we basically separated the level of the state and level of components. Next one is default values. Here we have, we want a default value for a class name and we're gonna assign it like this, but this is the old school way. Much cleaner way would be by using ES6 default params. 
So we're gonna simply assign icon large by doing this. And this looks much easier to read, I would say. Even a better way would be to use prop types because it is actually coming from React even though it is now a separate package that you need to install. Here we have default props and we are declaring class name and icon large. Well, it also depends on whether you're using TypeScript or not. If you are using a TypeScript, then you probably will need to create an interface to make it cleaner. Well, the next one is rest and spread. This example is very, looks very old. Imagine we have a use case where we accept props, but we don't really need class name and we're gonna pass other, all other props to my other component. What we can do here is use object assign and then delete this class name for some reason. But a much cleaner way would simply be using destructuring. So we're gonna pull class name and everything else as others. We're gonna spread everything else to my other component here and simply use the class name. Next one is props shorthands. I'm pretty sure you had this use case already if you used React. So you wanna pass kind of a Boolean value and re-render something in a child. Even a cleaner way, in my opinion, would simply be omitting this Boolean value because if you didn't know, you can omit them. So show title is gonna be true or false based on what the value is. And it kind of similar to strings. For So if you didn't know, if you have a string that you're passing down to the child, you can omit this curly brackets and it's gonna work the same way. All right, the next point is conditional rendering. So imagine we have a show model, which can be true or false, and everyone has done this. So if it's true, model was open. If not, we're gonna show null. But even a cleaner way would simply be using this end operator and showing model was open because if show model is false, nothing's gonna show up. And another way of dirty coding is using two different states, show model and not showing model, because it simply doesn't look good. So make sure that you just use a ternary operator and show different values there. Right, the next one is side effects and hooks. Hooks were introduced recently, well, a couple of years ago <laughs> in React, and you, there's a very easy way to make them reusable. Of course, if a hook is being reused across different components. In this case, I'd simply created a new file called use fetched post, and I put the state here and the effect as well, and I'm simply returning posts. And in the actual component, I'm gonna use this hook and re-render all, or basically render all of my posts using map. This looks much cleaner, doesn't it? And it can scale better. And last but not least, styles. So in this case, we are passing style, inline styles as an object, but this can get really bloated if you have many styles. A better way would be this. As you can see, what we're doing here is we simply have separate variables for styles. So here we have the main and here we have the div and h1. And in the template, we are referencing the styles.div and styles.h1 as we need. And this makes our code look much, much better. This video is based on articles by Donovan West, Reed Barger and Tyler Hawkins. Thanks for the great content, guys. I'm gonna leave the links to the articles in the description below. Hope you learned something new today. And as always, if you did, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos on this channel. Also, if you wanna optimize the rendering performance of your React app, make sure to check this video. I'm pretty sure you're gonna learn something there.